special day for all of us to remember the men and women who died serving in the military for the United States of America. <laughs> the tradition of Memorial Day has been going on since the Civil War, originally called Decorations Day, where flowers and flags were placed on graves. Some people report that this tradition goes back to 431 BC, to the ancient Greeks and the Romans. In May of 1968, General John A. Logan, Commander-in-Chief, of the Grand Army of the Republic issued a decree that May 30th should become the na nationwide day of commemorance for more than 620,000 soldiers killed in the Civil War. Pembroke's own GAR, Grand Army of the Republic Hall, which once housed Pembroke soldiers, still stands, stands in Pembroke Center. Built in the 1800s, undergoing much needed repairs now and being used by the Pembroke Police Boys and Girls Club. We have, we have been there for the last 38 years. In America, as far back as 1631, the colony of New Plymouth took up arms against the Indians. Of course, Pembroke was still part of Duxbury. Settlements needed to be protected and borders defended. The Revolutionary War started and the Pembroke Resolves in 1772. The War of 1812, where the British soldiers burnt down the White House. The Civil War of 1861, with the Grand Army of the Republic. The Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam conflict, the Cuban conflict, the War on Terror in Iraq and Afghanistan, only to say a few. The list of conflicts that this country has assisted other countries is quite long. The most recent deaths of Pembroke residents, uh, First Lieutenant Brian McPhillips, April 4, 2003. He was from Monroe Street. PFC Matthew Bean, 31, 2007 from Fairway Lane. And SPC Jess, Jesse Crudup, December 31, 2008 from School Street. So take a little time out of your day today to think about the past wars and conflicts that the town of Pembroke residents lost their young men and women to, so that we could be free and live in peace. Some gave it all. And some are currently in the battlefields today, not knowing if they will be back for future events. We have a great country, and I'm so proud of the men and women that serve and protect us every day. Although my father didn't lose his life during a battle while serving in the Navy, I bring out his flag every Memorial Day and hang it from my porch. And now I have 
grandpa's flag to remember his service in the Navy also during the Second World War. God bless our military, God bless America, and have a great day. Thank you. When we decided to undertake the design and construction of this memorial, we were determined that it should be something special. After all, it's meant to honor the courage and sacrifice of all the brave heroes who fought in the global war on terrorism. The monument's made of granite. It represents a firm strength and steadfastness, an unyielding commitment and endurance to finish the mission that was entrusted to our brave servicemen and women. But along with that goes a softness like this grass to realize that there are moments that command a sympathy and sensitivity to a brother or sister who needs support when the battle is overwhelming. Our American flag flies above it all, representing our freedom. Today we honor those men and women who have answered the call to protect, protect and defend our way of life. Our liberties and values stand safe today because of the brave men and women who have been ready to face the fire. Rudyard Kipling said, we sleep safe in our beds because rough men and women stand ready to visit violence on those who would do us harm. And we thank God for each and every one of them. I consider myself blessed to be among those who answered the call to serve in these wars, not because I wanted to leave my family and travel halfway around the world, not because I wanted to witness the horrors that human beings are willing to commit against each other. I'm blessed because Amongst all those atrocities, I witnessed America's finest committing acts of courage, bravery, and heroism, as well as acts, as well as acts of kindness, empathy, and compassion. To paraphrase Major Richard Winters, I'm not a hero, but I had the honor of serving with him. We honor those heroes here today with the dedication of this monument. Thank you. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. This has been a long time coming. We've worked, the committee has worked many, many years to get this monument today. And uh, it's here. It was delivered Saturday, which was cutting it really close. We have the Bean family here today, Matthew's parents, and we have the McPhillips family here today, Brian's parents, and they're going to unveil the monument for you when you're ready. Okay. Yeah, you've got to go on this side. But it has the town seal and all the branches of the service and it says the Pembroke Global War on Terror Memorial. The grateful citizens of Pembroke dedicate this memorial to all of the men and women from the Bay State who answered Freedom's Call after the attacks of September 11, 2001. And to all the families and friends who supported them in their mission to preserve our freedom, we are eternally in debt. For your sacrifice will always be remembered. And it's dedicated today, May 29th. And on the back, <laughs> we have Pembroke soldiers killed in action. First Lieutenant Brian M. McPhillips, U.S. Marine Corps, 2003, and PFC Matthew A. Bean, U.S. Army, 2007. It's a beautiful monument. Good job.